what's as good as getting a brand new game for our Sega Genesis and Mega Drive? Well, getting a remake of an official game that never came out in Europe. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. The Sega Genesis and Mega Drive got so many good games, but not all of them came out in all territories. But there are companies out there that are re-releasing these old games officially in physical form. Phallus is a classic action platformer that was originally released in Japan on home computers like the MSX. But as consoles like the Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive became more popular in the 90s, games like Phallus were remastered and ported to the powerful, dedicated game devices. Many of these games that were released early in the 16-bit console's life cycle are very expensive to pick up now, especially if they're complete in box. But over the last few years, games companies like Retrobit have been licensing these older, rarer titles and making officially licensed physical releases of these classics. And in this week's show, we're going to be taking a look at their latest release, which is not just a single game, but the complete series of Valis games that were released on the Sega Genesis and Sega Mega Drive in Japan. Now there are a total of four original games in the series, with Valus 2 getting a remake for the Mega Drive and Valus 4 getting a remake for the SNES, so six unique titles in the series. The Sega Genesis got the original Valus, The Phantasm Soldier, a remake of the second game retitled Sid of Valus, which also had a complete chibi art style overhaul, the team called this a deformed art style, and finally Valus 3. And you can get these from Retrobit individually or in a collector's set, but more about that later. Valus the Phantasm Soldier follows Yuki, a young Japanese schoolgirl who's dragged into an interdimensional conflict taking place in the fantasy realm. You're gifted the sword of Valus and transformed into the hero who will hunt down the pieces of the Phantasm Jewel and defeat the evil Vacanta. The first game in this set and in the series is a bit of a mixed bag. This is an early 90s game and for its era is not a bad game. There's some well thought out animation for the main character and she has some nice moves. Your standard sword attack, crouch attack, power slide, a special ground pound that uses health, jump and high jump. You can also upgrade your sword and add different projectiles to it. The level structure is relatively simple and on par with games that came out at the same time. There's some verticality in the platforming gameplay but nothing that fundamentally changes the game. There are also boss fights, but as long as your sword is maxed up before you fight these bosses, they're easily overcome. The biggest drawback in the game is the traversal speed. Yuko crawls along as she takes out enemies, and it can be frustrating at times. And I found myself power sliding or jumping to move from left to right just that little bit faster. Graphically, as an early 90s game, it's impressive, especially the early city levels and then the later levels. Nice details adorn the walls and the universe feels cohesive and believable. Probably the most impressive aspect of the game is its cutscenes and story. At times it felt like I was watching an anime with 10 minute long scenes playing out. I can see this really appealing to the 90s otaku. Next up we have Sid of Valis and this is a remake of Valis 2 for the Sega Mega Drive and it had a complete rework of its art style. You could say that for fans of the Valis series that this was their Wind Waker, at least visually. The game's chibi style was designed to appeal to a younger and broader demographic than the version found on consoles like the TurboGrafx CD. The structure of the game is broadly similar to the original. It's a side-scrolling action platformer. The obvious difference is the art style that's similar to games like the Cheeky Cheeky Boys and Alex Kidd. I love the first level with all the Japanese storefronts and signage, something rarely seen in Western games. The gameplay is now a lot faster and there's some depth to the weapon system where players can now choose their weapon and even their clothing. Clothing affects HP and defense so you can build a character that leans in either direction. Equally, the attacks can be changed to suit the enemies you're fighting. There's also a special bomb attack you can use to take out all enemies on the screen. The level structure doesn't see a big evolution from the original Valus the Phantasm Soldier. They're removing platforms and pits in the level now, but these offer little challenge to the levels as your character is simply bounced out of the hole or back onto the platform if you fall off, with a health penalty applied for your failure to clear the obstacle. 
The game is fun and the bosses are a big improvement over the original game with patterned attacks. Although if you get yourself in the right position, you can dispatch the boss of a level very quickly. Enemies are also now more complex with attack patterns and projectiles that can make traversal a real challenge. Sid of Valors is a marked improvement over the original with more depth, better visuals and faster gameplay. The final game you get in the Valus collection from Retrobit is Valus 3. Valus 3 is also the last game in the series to be published on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. It goes back to the original formula of the first game but with some significant improvements. The visuals have had an overhaul and the levels have more detail and more colour. Valus 3 continues the tradition of an anime in a game with its environmental storytelling and great cutscenes. The 10 minute long scenes are also back. Unfortunately, traversal speed goes back to the original and after playing Sid of Valus, I missed moving across the screen at a pace that didn't put me to sleep. But despite the locomotion speed being slow, the overall combat has had a huge improvement. The hitbox issues of the original are now resolved, making combat more responsive. You can still upgrade your weapons, but the key focus is now on your magic, with some nice spells that make a real difference to combat. The biggest addition to the combat system and to the game overall is that you can now collect characters from the storyline and switch between them in the game. This is a great addition and each character offers a different style of attack. The level structure has also been overhauled with moving platforms, vertical traversal, auto-scrolling levels and even levels where you need to choose which character you'll take on the level with you. The intro cutscene is amazing and it even gives you the backstory of both Phallus 1 and 2. Valus 3 takes what players loved about the series and turns it up to 11. If only the traversal speed could be doubled. I've really enjoyed playing all three games in the series and you can see that the developers learnt more and more about their tech and the genre with every game they made. These games are cult classics with their anime styled cutscenes and story driven level design. And it's a real pity that they never got a release in the PAL territories. Until now. Retrobit are re-releasing all three physical games under an official license and you can pre-order them now until the 27th of November 2022. As with all Retrobit releases, once the pre-order period is over, you'll no longer be able to buy these games again. Now each game will come with a custom coloured cartridge, a full coloured manual, reversible inlay for your clamshell, a card art sleeve and a certificate of authenticity. All three games can be bought individually for $49.99 or €64.99. You can also get the complete collection for $144.99 or €169.99. You'll get an additional art sleeve that wraps around the complete collection and an acrylic stand featuring the three heroines from Valus 3. And for power collectors, this is the chance to finally own this classic Sega Mega Drive trilogy. great series for Sega's 16-bit console and again if you're a European collector this is an awesome chance to own a great trilogy 
on the system. Now, if you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, you want to see more new games for old consoles or just retro gaming in general, then why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below this video. We put out brand new shows every single Monday and so that you never miss one, you can also click on the little bell just below this video. Now, if you can't wait until Monday, if that's way too long, then don't worry, because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy, two of which you can watch over here.